truly a powerful name, the name of Jesus. That's what we're talking about today. I want you to be thinking this morning as you gather together about who you are. What's your identity? What do you believe about yourself? What do you know about yourself? What have others told you about yourself that you know to be false? What have others told you about you that you know to be true? But above all else, what is it that God says about you? The one who created you, the one who give, gave you life, what has he given you? Let's pray. God, may we know the name that you have given to us. May we know it well, and may it direct our identity. Lead us this morning as we worship you. Help us to see you, to honor and glorify you. Continue to live prepared to kneel before the one whose name is above every other name, and that is the name of Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, MCC. It's so great to see you here today, and it's so great to be together to worship our Lord. Please stand with us, and we're going to begin our worship this morning with some awesome music. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name, blessed be your name, blessed be your name, when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name, every blessing, every blessing you pour out. Blessed be your name, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes.
as we talk about this topic of identity and um, names and the importance of names and the things that we call ourselves and what what the Lord calls us, um, it's it's definitely a struggle these days, especially for those of us growing up in the culture of social media and just constant magazines and websites, blogs, influencers telling you what you should and shouldn't be, telling you what you do and don't need, telling you if you are like this, then you have it all. If you are like this, then you're wrong. And that causes so many issues for us. When we look for our identity and for our um, worth in things other than Jesus Christ, um, it often leads us down dark paths, and I'm definitely somebody who can um, attest to that, and I know a lot of you in this room are as well. Um, so as we go, as Pastor Craig was saying this morning, to consider where you place your identity. Do you place your identity in the name brand purses that you have? Do you place your identity in um, how much you can squat or how much you can bench? Do you place your identity in your jean size? Do you place your worth on those things? Guilty, sometimes. So I would encourage all of us this morning to, as we sing these songs, like I was saying, really consider laying those and giving them up to Christ because he is the only thing that can fill that void in our souls that we're missing, that we think we need to fill with stuff and we think we need to fill with improving ourselves. We think we need to fill with changing the way that we look. Um, changing the way that we act and the name Christian carries a very big responsibility and um, I'm sure we'll learn a lot of times we fail at that um, bearing that name and bearing that responsibility and so the way that we hold ourselves and the way that we carry ourselves is so important so we're going to sing this song here it's called It Is Well and it's about um, a, really just finding peace in who God has and what the situations that God has created put you in um, who God has made you to be um, just finding peace in that and accepting it and trusting that he is in control of it all the waves and the wind know his name the rocks bow before him Grander earth has quaked before, moved by the sound of his voice, and sees it all shaken and stirred, can be calmed and broken from my regard. Through it all. be it for me to not believe even when my eyes can't see and this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea and through it all
that again. So let go my soul and trust in Him. The ways and wind still know His name. The waves and wind still know His name. It is well. It is well. that feel it it is well it is well with my soul it abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start
and be seated. The good news of what it means that Jesus is alive within us, the power that God is watching us, that it can be well with our soul, for example, when we realize that God is watching over us, that God is with us, the power that comes when we recognize that no matter what wind and waves may be blowing in our lives, God is. He calls us to think about the gifts that we have been given as Christians, and we're going to talk about what that means today. What does that name Christian mean? We've been given this great gift to be called followers of Jesus, and in that, to recognize that not only are we those Sunday mornings, but we ought to be thinking about that every day of our lives, for every day is a gift from God. The scripture lesson, as we continue in the book of Acts, and we talk about the power of a name as we continue in in our journey on wilderness, and think about suffering in this life, we read today in Acts chapter 11 about the early believers. They were known up until this point in the book of Acts as followers of the way, Um, followers ultimately of Jesus or the Christ. And so as followers of the way, they had begun to face some persecution, largely around the time of Stephen's death and beyond. That's when persecution really began to set in for the church, and there were many who were being killed because of their faith. And so we pick up here in Acts chapter 11, and we read this. Meanwhile, God's blessing... He was filled with joy, and he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith, and many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went on to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he brought him back to Antioch. Both of them stayed there with the church for a full year, teaching large crowds of people. 
it was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. Let's pray. God, help us to understand what it means that believers, followers of yours, were called Christian that day and from that day forward. Help us to understand the significance of our name in Christ. Speak, Holy Spirit, according to your plan and purpose for everyone who is gathered here and for this, your church, where it belongs to you. And we give you thanks for that in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> so on Monday, a friend of mine, Scott, I, Scott um, and I are kind of two of the original members of my Myrtle Beach team that goes down to play golf in February. Um, every February, and um, Scott and I are good friends, been longtime friends, and um, my friend Scott texted me on Monday and uh, told me, he, first he had texted me last week and asked me to get our lay pastors involved with praying for him, particularly for his daughter, and his daughter was due to have a C-section on Monday. She lives down in Florida, and there were some potential complications with the birth and all of that, so, so he had asked me to be in prayer for him, and so as praying for him, but he texted me on Monday um, in the early evening to, and of course there were a couple pictures with it, of his new grandson. And it was, it was awesome to see now. His grandson's been in the NICU all week, but is now, I understand, as I got a text from him last night, his grandson is finally eating and he's out of the NICU and so on his way home soon and, you know, answered prayer. So it's good, good stuff. And so I've seen pictures as Amanda, his daughter, sends them to Scott and then Scott forwards them on to me and uh, it's a real blessing to, to be part of that. But on Monday, when Scott texted me about the birth, I immediately called him, and I'm like, yeah, great, great news, and we're, you know, we're praying for your grandson. What's his name? I said. And he said, well, he doesn't have a name yet. And I said, come on, man, there's no name yet? What's your daughter doing? He's got to have a name, right? He said, well, they've had nine months, and so Scott was kind of itching to get a name for his grandson, and I was kind of wondering, what, what is this name, you know, that, that they're going to give him? And so middle of the week, I guess it was maybe, maybe the next day or maybe Wednesday morning, I texted Scott. It's like, what's the name? He doesn't have one yet, but they're, you know, between three names now. And so he was telling me the three names. And finally on Thursday when I asked again, he said, his name is Owen Lawrence. And so we give thanks for Owen Lawrence being born into the world. Lawrence w was given his name. I asked him, you know, why? Why Owen Lawrence? And and he said, well, Lawrence is related to his dad's name. His dad is, is Larry, so, so that's kind of cool, right? You know, and we give names based sometimes on a parent or a grandparent or somebody significant in our lives. Um, but why Owen? And Scott wasn't quite sure why Owen. And so I decided, because I'm interested sometimes in names, I decided to, to look up the baby name meaning of Owen. Now, this was not why his parents named him Owen. They just kind of like the name, and we do that often in our culture. We hear a name, and we like the name, and so we give that, that name to the, to the child. Um, but sometimes there's, there's meaning in it, and so I, I googled it, and I, I was anxious to tell Scott the meaning of his grandson's name. It can mean noble birth, but it can also mean youthful warrior. And I thought, here's this baby who's been fighting for life this week in the NICU, and his name is Youthful Warrior. I thought, that's pretty cool. It's a great connection. So I was glad to tell Scott that. He took, took some uh, joy in hearing that. Um, and again, good news is Owen is now out of the NICU and I believe is coming home either today or tomorrow. But that's, that's good news. But names can carry great meaning in life. And they can speak to our lives. They can have great intention. There are many cultures that name their children with great intention, not based on a name that they like, but based on what that name will mean. And that's very often true in the Bible, where we'll read in the Bible somebody's name, and it'll give us the meaning of that name. Because in many cultures around the world throughout history, names were given with purpose. And I think there's one in particular um, that I thought about when I was preparing this sermon this week that I think has impact for us today. So I went back and I looked in 1 Samuel chapter 1, we are told about Samuel's name. Now, I'll tell you about Samuel's name in a minute and what it means, but I want you to think about how all of this went. There was a man named Elkanah and his wife Hannah in 1 Samuel. Great story in, in the Old Testament. Um, and, and 
Hannah was barren, and she prayed and pleaded and wept before God for a child to come, to, to be born through her. She wanted desperately a child. She would go up to the temple every year and pray. And in one of those encounters at the temple, she met Eli, the high priest. And uh, Eli, the high priest, thought for a while that she was drunk because she was praying, but no, no noise was coming out of her mouth. She was praying silently. But in any case, um, Eli met her and, and talked with her and, and then told her to go in peace. And through that prayer time and through that encounter, that year Hannah became pregnant with a baby in her womb. And she then weaned the baby and then did what she promised the Lord in that prayer when she you know, had the encounter with Eli, which was to come and dedicate the child to the Lord. She would leave the child, once the child was weaned, she would leave that child with Eli and leave him at the temple. That's a big step to do. Samuel, by the way, if you know anything about um, Samuel, Samuel was the first uh, priest of God to anoint the first kings in Israel. He anointed Saul and he anointed David. That was Samuel's job. Now, you might think then that in all of this, if we're reading the story and we look ahead and we see what Samuel's life would be in terms of being a priest of God, in terms of being a great leader who would anoint the first kings of Israel, you might think that Samuel's name means something like great leader or priest or something like that. But here's what Samuel's name means according to 1 Samuel 1, verse 20. In 1 Samuel 1.20, we read this. In due time, Hannah gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I asked the Lord for him. Samuel's name doesn't mean great leader. It doesn't mean priest of God or servant of God. It means, I asked the Lord for him. In other words, the name Samuel means, God answered me. God heard me. God heard my prayer. God heard my cry. God saw me in my distress. He was with me. Samuel was an answer to Hannah's prayer, and that's what she named him. You are God's answer. Now that, for me, is significant when I think about the name Christian. What do we recognize about God? The slide that you see up here today speaks to the many names of God. All of those names are assigned to God because they mean something very specific and important. And sometime perhaps we'll do a, a, maybe a sermon series or something or maybe a Bible study on those names. But we learn in those names that God is, for example, creator, protector, provider, healer, advocate, comforter, lover, and savior. But one of those names that is assigned to God is actually assigned to Jesus. The name Emmanuel means that God is with us. What happened to Hannah when she was crying out in distress, feeling alone, feeling like she was empty? The world told her that she was nothing because she was a barren woman. And in that culture, to be a barren woman was to be like nothing. At least that's the narrative that the culture would have put upon her. And she cried out to God. And what she realized is that God has been with me all along. God has seen me. God is with me. God answered me, Samuel. My son Samuel was born. Friends, when we think about what Hannah learned and what we learn is that no matter what, God is with us. Now I know in this life there are moments when it seems like God is nowhere to be found. The pain and the suffering that we can experience in this life can just drive us down to deep, dark despair and loneliness. But I was reminded as I was preparing this message of a passage, a chapter in Scripture that is... 
um, has been very important to me through the years and that I share with people quite often um, in times when they've lost a loved one. I often will share this uh, chapter or at least portions of it at a funeral service or memorial service and that's Romans chapter 8. And Paul writes quite extensively in Romans about suffering that we experience in this life but in chapter 8 I think he brings it all home and helps us to understand who we are in our identity. Paul reminds us there that there is no condemnation for us when we are in Christ, when we bear the name Christian, when we are followers of Jesus. There's no condemnation for us. He goes on to remind us that, that when things are falling apart in our lives and when we go to pray and we can't even say anything, after we have cried out to God, after we have yelled, after we have quietly prayed, after we, like Hannah, maybe just silently prayed and we couldn't even get the words out, Paul reminds us there in Romans chapter 8 that the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf. We're reminded in other scripture that Jesus is our advocate in those times, that he prays on our behalf as well when we can't think of the words to say. He reminds us there that we are children of God who can cry out to Abba, our Father. can pray, help me, because I am yours. He reminds us there in Romans chapter 8 that we are chosen by God and that we belong to God. And he reminds us in that, that even though we suffer in this life through grief, through wildernesses, through false narratives that people write about our lives or that people put upon our lives, though we suffer in various kinds of ways through grief, sadness. He reminds us in Romans chapter 8 that God is working all of those things. God sees all of those things. God sees us in every one of those moments, and he is saying, I am with you. I'm going to take those things, and I am going to bring good out of them. And sometimes, friends, it's hard to see the good that God is going to bring. It's really hard sometimes to understand. And yet, he promises to be with us. He didn't promise us a pain-free life, but he promised to be with us in the midst of that pain. Just like Hannah. Just like us at times. Then he goes on to tell us that because God is for us, nothing can ultimately stand the test of time against us. Everything that comes against us will eventually fail and falter when we bear the name Christian. Again, that's hard. It's hard to see, but God is with us. He promises us that. And then he concludes the chapter by telling us that there is nothing in heaven or earth that can separate us from the love of God that comes in his son Jesus for us. Nothing in heaven or earth that can separate us from his love. And while I know hearing that can feel empty at times in our lives, the truth of that can undergird us and sustain us through some of the worst circumstances that we could ever imagine. Think about it. When Christians were first assigned this name Christian, and I'm talking now, Romans chapter 8, about what it means to be Christian, that God is with us. Everything that Paul says in Romans chapter 8 is about what it means to be Christian. When Christians were first assigned that name, here's how the text began. Meanwhile, the believers who had been scattered throughout who had been scattered during the persecution after Stephen's death. The whole narrative here is, is put in this understanding that those Christians were suffering great, in great ways. They were being killed for their faith. They were being put down. They were being told they were nothing. But they knew who they served. They knew who their Lord was. They knew their name as followers of the way, and now they had a new name, Christian followers of Jesus, followers of the Christ. Christians were first assigned that name Christian in a time of great persecution and suffering. And that's why it's so vital for us to understand what our name is as Christian. Think about it. When a person is baptism, looking forward to that, um, Aubrey Grimm will be coming for baptism, granddaughter of the Grimms over here and um, we're just excited about that. I met with Aubrey's parents this past week, and 
what a joy that is. And we think about it's all about taking on a new name. What do we do? When, we, when, when a child or an adult is baptized, we say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We take on a new name. as followers of Jesus. We should think deeply about that name because it gives us our identity in the midst of difficult times in life. As we think about that, we live in a culture that assigns us names based on what it wants to say about us. Others around us think that they have the right to name us, so they call us names based on Maybe we have a different political persuasion than they do, and so they come up with a nice, cute little name to call us, whatever that is. I won't go into all of those, but I want you to think about the fact that names and labels have the power to lift up. They have the power to heal. They have the power to bring hope. But friends, they also have the power to absolutely destroy another person. And we need to be careful about that in our society. And when somebody labels you, just remember what your true name and what your true identity is, and that is Christian, follower of Jesus. Because that has the power to bring health and wholeness and life. As we think about all of that, I just want to take a minute now and focus on the name Christian one more time. I've talked about the understanding of it. As we heard about Samuel's name, God heard me, God sees me. Bless in our identity with God. We live in a world today where so many people are struggling with identity because we are out to label people as other but God puts a new label on us and says, you are not other, you are my own. You belong to me. The power of the name Christian is that it helps us to recognize that we are part of the family of God. Paul said it in Romans chapter 8, we are children of God. He makes that very clear there. Where he says we can cry out, Abba, Father. He makes it very clear in Romans chapter 8, and I encourage you to study that chapter, read it. It's a powerful, powerful identity marker for us. Helps us to see just who we are. Paul does such a masterful job in that chapter to help us to see just who we are in a world that wants to tell us false things about who we are. God wants to tell us the truth about who we are. That's why I started today talking about, listen, some people are going to say certain things about us. What are people saying about you that's false? What are people saying about you that's true, that maybe you need to listen to? What are people saying about you? But then take all of that and set it aside and ask, what is it that God says about me? God's love letter to us came in the person of Jesus, and it is through Jesus that we get our new name, that we get our new identity and that we realize just who we are. It's been such a meaningful study for me this week because of things that swirl around in my life at times. And I'm so deeply grateful that I could be reminded of just who I am. I'm not that, whatever others have said, but I am this child of God, loved, beloved of God. My heart of hearts, my identity is renewed this week because of my name, Christian. I say it each week, our mission statement is to learn from Jesus in order to live and love and lead like him. To be Christian then is to follow him. To recognize that I'm not just receiving something, but I'm becoming like him, like Jesus. 
I'm learning what it means to love others. How am I supposed to treat others in this life? Jesus teaches me that. How am I supposed to live my life? Jesus teaches me that. So many others will tell me how to live life, but only one voice can tell me the truth about how to live my life, and that is my Lord, my Savior. And oh, by the way, my brother. Remember that. The one who came to die to save us, the one who is Emmanuel, God with us, says to you and to me, you are my sister, you are my brother. We are sisters and brothers of Christ. That's what the name Christian means. And I am resolved. I am resolved today to believe that about myself. And I hope that you're resolved to believe that about yourself as well. Just like the early Christians were persecuted, it doesn't matter what others say about you. Just remember what it is that God has said about you. And own that. Own it. God, help us to own our name, Christian. Help us to see our lives in Christ. Help us to know you and your love so that we can be agents of that in this world and so that we can honor you not by grabbing power not by trying to be the greatest according to the world's standards but by learning the humility of Jesus and learning what it means to serve as you call us to serve one another in love and we will give you honor and glory for it all in the powerful name, in the loving name, in the name which is above every other name, we pray. That is Jesus, our identity. Amen. Today, we're going to take a little bit of time and do some couch talk, and I'm going to invite Elliot and Brad to come and join me here. on up guys there he is you can have a seat here grab the microphone welcome glad you're here why don't you guys introduce yourself tell us a little bit about yourself um i'm elliot and i go to mordico middle school and i'm going in eighth grade awesome uh i'm brad phelan um I really don't know what to say about myself. I teach adult Sunday school here Sunday mornings. It's good. Come join Brad's class Sunday mornings. There you go. Good plug for that. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for being here, guys. Appreciate it. So we've been talking today about Acts chapter 11 and what it means that our identity is in Christ. So, so what does it mean to you to be a follower of Jesus in the world? Um, for me, I think it's kind of like to like love others the way Jesus did and then also like spread that to like other people like maybe you have some friends that like aren't christian like tell them about jesus awesome i like what you just said up there about uh a lot of the world will try to tell you what it means and i never really thought about it like that but you're right um for, for me it, it it means that we allow him to be lord um like we we acknowledge his control we have we have to relinquish our own um like Elliot said, we want to be like Jesus. Well, we want to emulate him. We, want, we need to conform our actions and our thoughts um, and our lives to those that we see in Jesus. And then we're to call others to follow Jesus, too. Uh, it's all about making disciples. Um, at, le at least le recently for me, that's the big one. To be a Jesus follower means I'm supposed to go and make other followers, to walk alongside them, to, to show them who Christ is to me. Yeah, thank you guys. You both kind of hit on that, um, that, that as we are disciples, we are also called to lead others into discipleship. And I appreciate that, that theme because that's exactly what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to represent Christ well in the world, and, and um, you, you both hit on that. Um, so when we think about uh, that calling, how can we protect, serve, and love those with names that are used to, to persecute them. In other words, afterwards, he was kind of like, I guess some people were like being not nice to him or making fun of him. 
because like they just also we were playing like cake ball so like they wouldn't pass to him at all so like he kind of felt left out and then I talked to him and then I told the gym teacher and then um, I asked if she could put me specifically on his team next time so then like I could like pass to him and more stuff so and then kind of help him out that's awesome thank you that's I love how we can just tell a story and there it is right there that is a great story oh this I struggled with a little bit, I'll be honest. Um, and, and then it turns out that I have, I have a good bit that I want to say. <laughs> uh, for, first, uh, I have written here just from what you were talking about a little bit ago, is that labels can lift people up also. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I wrote down there, king, queen, because there's a, there's a certain group of people who have taken those words, and, and I see the empowerment that they get from looking at themselves as kings and queens. And, and I thought that's incredible, to be honest. Um, words can be can be real bad. Um, and, and at other times, I've also seen these negative words be embraced by the groups, and they lose all power, like immediately. I always thought that was so interesting, that the minute these people don't let it affect them, it goes away. There's no power left in the words. Um, first, I have written here, we have to stop laughing at all the off-color remarks, the snickers and the giggles. And, and I know it's terrible, but we all know it happens, um, whether we feel awkward and don't know what to do, so we just kind of giggle. Protecting and serving and loving people being persecuted by name calling, it often means going against the green. It means being that only person in the group. Uh, you might be a lone voice, and, but, it, but it's not as hard as you think. Uh, a, a simple hey. They're not going to say it again, but uh, most of the time, a simple hey can speak volumes. And it's very difficult today because it's no longer a common thing to stand up for each other. We just don't. Uh, it's easier to just ignore it. But, but it, ignoring it can be just as bad as committing the injustice itself. It, it's never okay to be a part of the hate. So for me, I, I think the simple answer is what Elliot already said, it's love. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, love means putting yourself second. That if we love those being persecuted, standing up for them would be automatic. And I just think about what happens inside of me. Like if something says something, somebody says something about my child or my wife, why don't I feel that way with everybody? Because I don't love them like I love my child and my wife, but but I think we need. I sit down with the family and talk about the baptism questions, but um, the the baptism questions that we that we follow. And since I mentioned baptism this morning, I just want to follow up on this. You know, the baptism questions um, are you know, do you recognize that there is sin in the world and sin in you? There's evil, injustice, and oppression in the world, and there's also that in you. And do you, then do you recognize, secondly, that God gives you the freedom and power to overcome that? And I've often used, particularly with students who would be um, coming for baptism, probably about your age or, you know, um, uh, somewhere in that, uh, you know, late elementary, early middle school age, if they were coming for baptism at that point in time, um, I, I would talk to them and use a similar story. Like, so you're on the playground at recess and you see a kid being bullied. And, and what God is doing is he's giving you the freedom and power to help overcome that by making a difference, by befriending that student. That's exactly what you talked about. And then, Brad, you followed up um, in some very practical ways of, of talking about how, how we need to make an effort to do the kind of loving thing that God calls us to do, that God gives us the power. How have you handled that? Um, kind of, yes. So, like, it was at school. So, like, um, I was just kind of hanging out with, like, some friends. And then... They were like kind of talking about something and then like my one friend he was like oh you can't say that around elliot he's a christian and then i was kind of like what and then like and then i guess like they just go off and talk by themselves and so like then it kind of makes me feel left out yeah. I, I so appreciate that and i'll say why in a minute but go ahead brad talk to us now that i just I so appreciate that be, and i've said it before that kind of stuff happens to me all the time as a pastor. Oh, the pastor's I, here. Oh, I, I can only imagine. Don't say that. I really can. <laughs> oh. I, no, I don't know if I've ever experienced what I call real injustice. Um, but, but I am pretty open to the world about my faith. Um, I mean, my wardrobe, uh, everything about me. My car's got stickers. So, so it's out there for anybody who wants to look at Brad. Um, so I've gotten comments, jokes that were aimed at me or my faith in general. I'm um, at work. I've got stickers on my hard hat. That's probably where most of the comments have ever come from. But it's okay. Um, I, I don't let it bother me because I don't care. Like you had said, I, I don't get my identity from those people. I know who I am. Jesus shows me who I am. Um, 
I ignore it, like I said. But, but I think what happens outside of that situation is, is my words, my actions, show them something other than what they are, are commenting on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then they get to see, sorry, they get to see Brad for real. And, and the good news is people remember what they see a whole lot more than they remember what they hear. Um, one of the things God has me do is I take water and ice to the job every day, and not just for myself, but for anybody. And, and I've done it for years. And then by the end of the day, that ice is gonna melt by morning. So if, a lot of times he has me walk around and just give out waters to people. I mean, how great is that? Um, and if I get the opportunity, I, I let him know, you know, God, God wants you to have this. He bought it, he paid for it, he just sent it along with me today. But the, but the comments stop. Um, the other thing is people end up coming up to you and start talking to you about the things in their lives. After, after they realize they can't get to you, well, then they realize there's something else going on there and, and, they, and they want to know a little more. There was a time, and I know I'm going along, I'm sorry, but there, there was a time I was on a job site and the superintendent of the job site or project manager came up and he was sort of like, I mean, we were talking, but he, he was just sort of looking at me weird and he said, what, what's your sticker say? I have a sticker on my heart, it says, Jesus will love the hell out of you. And, and I had to let him like look at it a second time and, and we ended up having this awesome conversation now every time I went to that job we'd talk about Christ, we'd talk about our faith um, and then one day I felt led to go into his trailer and, and, and we prayed together right there in his trailer that's never happened to me before um, so by ignoring the comments God can still work uh, amazing, amazing ways um, when it comes to that word Christian you kind of showed me something this morning because I, cause I have written here I don't identify as a Christian usually I feel like that word has gotten so twisted, um, mainly by the world um, and, and by Christians themselves. I, I tend to say I'm a believer or I'm a Christ follower, um, a child of God, but, but not after this morning. I'm taking that word back too, and I'm gonna own it, and, and, and I'm gonna show people what a Christian should look like and, and not just let that word be misused. Amen, amen. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate your willingness to share um, part of your lives with us today. So. Let's give thanks to God for these guys. So as the team comes and uh, comes back to lead us in our closing song, I hope that you'll be thinking about what does it mean to be Christian. That kind of is... Uh a loaded question sometimes. What does it mean to be a Christian? There's a lot of things we could say in response to that. Um, and I really appreciated the dialogue from Elliot and from Brad up on the couch this morning. Definitely gave lots of things to think about. And um, I've said this before, but the couch talks allow me to reflect on my own experiences and my own and I've had some similar experiences, like for example, you know, friends and that this is more so when I was in high school, but friends assuming that like I was ignorant about things because I was a Christian, like, oh, she doesn't, I, she can't learn about those things. Like that kind of thing. And who are they? So, and yes, we are called to love them and we're called to minister. They don't get to tell us who we are. That's Jesus, that's why we're here because we learn about him every week and we find it so important to learn more about God and about the person of Jesus Christ that we take two hours, three hours out of our Sunday morning every week or almost every week to come and to gather and to learn that. And so I definitely did lots of thinking and Brad, I like how you were talking about reclaiming the name Christian because I found myself doing something similar kind of moving away from the label Christian and calling myself like a Jesus follower or a Christ follower. Christian, sometimes I don't feel like getting into all of the, oh, but don't worry, I'm not that kind of, you know. So, but I definitely appreciated, Brad, your perspective on that. And actually, when you talked about your stickers, I want to show you my guitar pick really quick. It says, pick Jesus. Because, <laughs> um, and on the... Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall 
but you Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence you never failed me yet I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again you're still enough keep me within your love oh my heart will sing your praise again your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence you didn't, you never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. So as we think about opportunities that we will have this week to go out into the world and consider where we will live, who we will live among, we think about ways that we can serve Jesus well because he gives us our identity. So think about that as you prepare to go out into the world today. A couple of quick announcements. The campus cupboard food and toiletry drive is now running through, the month, uh, through this month, through the end of August. Um, the campus cupboard cupboard actually helps to provide needs for Millersville University students of food so make sure that you um, get one of the shopping lists that's available in the laundry do some shop in the lobby not in the laundry <laughs> the laundry I had two loads of laundry yesterday that must be on my mind I don't know you know uh, in the lobby <laughs> 
Um, and, and you can uh, take that list and um, serve a need in our community. And in that way, you'll be serving Jesus and you'll be carrying his name well. Also, you can help with the Mission Thrift Shop sales days. They're here. They're happening now. There's a flyer in the lobby that will tell you more about that. Um, you can find out information like that on your e-blast or on the What's Happening page on the website. And if you don't get that, contact Laura in the office, and she'll make sure that you get that um, for you into your inbox. And so let's go out into the world, and let's serve Jesus well. Go in his love. Amen. <laughs>